Hello everybody, welcome to my channel, Renzo here. Let's paint a new portrait. Hello Rob. Thank you. Hello Sofnir, hello Manuel. Hello Nilu. Okay, I'm gonna start sketching. I'm gonna mention the colors. Uh I have titanium white, a yellow chrome, cadmium orange, orange, cadmium red, permanent alizarin crimson. Uh, let me check out my my audio. Okay, everything is okay. Uh, raw amber, copper blue, and ivory black. Okay. I need some paper towel. Hello, Ludmila. Hello, Monique. Okay, I'm gonna sketch a little bit just with raw amber. A little bit of linseed oil. I'm going to minimize here my YouTube window. Okay. Okay. Let's see. I got the image here to my left same size that I'm planning to paint okay uh, let me see I'm just checking the, the overall shape of the face okay. I think it's a nice size the hair here make it maybe a little bit bigger yeah, a little bit bigger maybe just a little bit Okay, I uh, basically just see just few values on the face. I can see easily light, obviously the nose, the cheekbone, and the forehead. Okay, uh, first I will check. I will start with the center line, and I see on the photograph if I can split the face in three portions. Okay, and it looks like it works. Now, from the, the eyebrow to the nose, I split this in three portions. And usually I can sit the eyes on top of this line. It's not gonna be like that all the time, but when it works, it's better because I can just go back to that and check out on that every time. Hello Jim, hello Diego, hello Janos. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see the nose, how tilted is the nose. I usually adjust the frame, my canvas or the photograph. To see how tilted is the nose, I and mean, I do the same to, to see how tilted is the face. Okay, from the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the chin, I split this in two, and I can see the mouth on top of the, this uh, line. Okay, here's the center line. Seed oil. Let's 
Hello Kundan, hello Saida, hello Siamus. You know, Rob Sasso, I, I think I got a nickname, the Painting Peruvian. The Painting Peruvian. Okay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Okay, I think I'm comparing right now, you know, kind of you know, moving my eyes really fast from the painting, from the photograph to the painting, you know, photograph painting, photograph painting. Okay, I think it does, I think the drawing is okay. Okay, I'm gonna start. Every time that I, I see a photograph, I, I, I see that it's a lot of dark colors. Those are the colors that I gotta start with. You know, in this way, it's gonna be easier to judge the skin color. Okay, okay. First, I see a lot of light on the hair. The face is kind of a mid-tone. Yeah, no highlight on the face is lighter than the highlights here on the hair. Yeah, everything dark, dark, dark. Maybe the background can add some green. You know. Look like she's outside in some place, but everything is pretty dark. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh yeah, let's let's start with that first. I'm gonna add some green. I'm mixing cobalt blue, chrome yellow and a touch of raw umber. Just to knock down this green a little bit. Okay. I'm gonna add some lizard oil to here. Just one second. Okay. Let's see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A bit of that. Yeah, I'm not so sure if I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it green or maybe dark. Just like the photograph, black. I'm just thinking about contrast. You know, if I need more contrast for the light, I'm gonna darken up the background. I like it kind of green, greenish. Okay. Now the hair. Raw umber and copper blue, a little bit of lacy oil. Let's paint a little bit of the hair. Touch of red, more raw umber, a little bit of easy oil. I'm gonna add some yellow here and white. Touch of orange. Now I can judge better the skin color. Okay. I mean, it's not like I want an exactly a skin color, you know, like to be kind of orangey or reddish. It's more about the value, 
don't make it lighter or darker. And this is to judge where you have more colors around. Hello, Marius. Hello, Casimo. Okay. Now, let's paint a little bit of the face. I'm squinting down my eyes and I'm trying to see value differences between light and shadows. Okay. Another thing that I did that uh, uh, I just darkened up one of the photograph and I got here on my screen a darker version. Okay, because you know the it's kind of uh, the face is kind of soft, and that makes things kind of a little bit difficult when we are squint down our eyes because we try to see shadows and lights. And now I'm squinting down my eyes, watching on the darker version. Okay, in this way it's easier. To see, for example, that there is light here, There's light here and here, nose and the cheek. That's the lightest lights on the face. Okay. Then the light here and here, and the forehead is not that bright. Okay, and uh, usually I start. Just thinking uh, just about a simple skin color, okay? I don't try to match exactly the color I, that I, I see on the photograph, on any photograph, okay? What I do, and I've been doing for you know, all the videos, I start with some orange, okay? I can mix orange just with yellow and red, or I can use cadmium orange, and I knock down this color. Can use, I'm gonna use white, I can use raw umber, cover blue, and black. It's up to anyone. Okay, some people don't like black. For me, it's okay. Sometimes I use black, cover blue, or raw umber. I'm using raw umber. I wanna knock down this color. Okay, this is gonna be my base. Yeah. I want this to be neutral. You know, I'm gonna add more paint and I'm gonna adjust these colors. This two orangey, uh, yeah, maybe uh, and I'm gonna knock it down. Let me check out my, my screen here. Wow, the yellow looks pretty bright. Let me adjust my camera, okay? Just one second. I know something has changed, but. Uh, I just uh, lower the saturation of my camera. Hello, Sylvia. Okay. Now I got this value, and at least I need at least two values. Okay, one for shadows, one for lights. In this case, on the face, we don't see like shadows, like. Uh, like a, a lot of contrast, like for example here, that is pretty clear on the hair, light and shadow. On the face is not that clear, but when I was squint down my eyes, I see shadows, a little bit darker value around the eyes, you know, below the nose, especially this area of the face. For that, I'm gonna prepare a darker variation of orange. Okay, I'm gonna mix this with a little bit of blue. Okay, now it's kind of difficult to have a recipe for a skin color, but you know, skin color, it depends not just on the skin color, it depends on the colors that are around. If something is red, if something is red around the skin color, it's going to affect the skin color. Something blue, something, you know, anything. But let's say that working with this kind of recipe formula works pretty good for me, okay? The only thing I gotta be sure that about saturation because sometimes I got this color too orangey you know I, I just gonna be be sure about saturation and obviously about the difference between light and shadow if this one to these ones are pretty close it's not gonna work now I can work with just two values or three or four or five it's up to anyone okay uh, values usually is, is gonna be enough uh, two values are going to be enough from, let's say, for beginning. 
to step back. Uh, yeah, I think that's okay. If somebody has any question about you know painting, about materials, about anything, just let me know. Okay, feel free to ask me any question. It doesn't matter if the same question, I mean, you know, I've been asking same the same questions again and again and that's pretty normal. Okay. That's okay for me. a darker color. Okay, here for example there's a little bit of a shadow because of the cheekbone that is here. Here's a little bit darker, pretty subtle because of the globella. Okay. The globella is this area, this kind of triangle here. As you can see, I don't start with a lot of paint. No, I'm squinting down my eyes and I think I got the values kind of close, you know, shadows and lights. Okay, uh, it's better when we know where are the lights. A little bit of anatomy is gonna help us to, to know we're gonna place the, the, the lights and the shadows. We'll, where we're gonna find always lights and shadows or any face. Uh, uh, hello Nico, hello Gray, Mansions, hello Mila, Simus asking me, have you ever met someone famous that you painted? Oh, uh, no, not to be honest, no. Uh, uh, I live in Peru, Lima, Peru, uh, and yeah, I haven't painted anyone, uh, any famous people from my country. Yeah. And because I live in Lima, Peru, obviously that's going to be kind of difficult to f to meet famous people that live in in different, you know, countries. Okay, the last fa famous people for me that I met and I hand a little bit with this guy was a painter and the thing is this this painter is pretty famous here he died a year ago he died in the middle of the pandemic but I don't think it was because of the pandemic I don't know but the thing is that I remember going to the museum when I was an art student and I, I always got impressed by his paintings. He painted some kind of, you know, surrealism. I was pretty, pretty amazed by his ideas and, and he loved to kind of smooth out the surface a lot and I, I always liked that, that style. Okay, that was when I was maybe my 20s and one day uh, I met a guy, he works in restoration. I met this guy for four or five years 
And one day he told me, hey, you want to know this guy, Re Revilla? The name is Revilla, the last name. I said, do you know him? Yeah, yeah. He's coming here. He's my friend. I said, wow, oh my God, for real? Yeah. And I met this guy. It's pretty nice. Pretty nice guy. Yeah. Yeah, for me, that was amazing, you know. That was amazing because I was, uh, I admired his paintings for years. And I used to just go to see his paintings on the museum that are kind of close to where I live. And I never thought about just meeting him. Yeah. I ended up on, on his studio like uh, maybe four, five, six times. Just, just there, you know, drinking a coffee. That was pretty nice. Rob Sasson, have you ever seen the Journey AI artworks being created? Oh no. I'm worried about, about it. I think it's going to harm artists. Oh yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, don't, I mean, no, no, I didn't know about that. I, I think I saw something like a, a YouTube video, just a title, you know, just a thumbnail or something about the AI. AI is intelligent, artificial intelligence, yeah? Intelligence. Have you ever tried to paint more loose, Lucy? Oh yes, yes, I tried. Yeah. Oh, with this uh, AI, they are able to create paintings in five minutes. Okay, wow, it's amazing. Yeah, I'm gonna check on that. I don't know, I don't know, I, I don't you know, I don't know what it is. I kind of imagine what it is, you know, maybe it's just it's computers doing the work. The closer I'm getting to work with, with a computer is digital painting, which I'm practicing more and more lately. Just one second, please. See? practicing more digital painting yes I, you know why I, I think it's just because it's so easy just to pick up my graphic tablet and just draw or paint or your paint things takes more preparation obviously it's so different you know a kind of difficult to get to the same with um, with digital painting, like, you know, when we paint with oil paint, a lot of things happen in here. A lot of things happens when we lay down more paint, when it, everything is wet, when we blend, when we glaze, it's just amazing. Yeah. Practicing uh, digital painting is just making me, making me love more, you know, traditional oil painting. Hello, Christine. Hello, Garu. Miss, miss you last week. Yeah, yeah, I have some uh, issues here. Uh, you know, yeah, but I, I couldn't make it last week. Mm. Hello, Nilu. Interested to see how you make her look younger. Yeah, yeah, that's the difficult part. Yeah, I was thinking about that right now because right now I'm checking out the window on YouTube. And you know it looks <laughs> it looks like it's not gonna look younger. Yeah, but I'm gonna try to get it. 
Hello Nikki. Okay. Let's continue. I got basically two values, no, just two values. I'm going to use a different brush, a clean one, and now I'm gonna add a little bit more paint orange, white, and raw umber. Okay. There's light here. I can see the light obviously on the photograph, and at the same time, time we uh, when you study anatomy, you know, we know that we gotta put place a light here. Why? Because of the cheekbone. Okay, a light here because of the cheek, a light here because of the nasal bone, and obviously light here because of the nose. Okay. You know, that's a combination between knowledge and observation. Now it's just about what we see, okay? It's always about what we see and what we know. Okay, hello Carol. Hello Michael. Clean a brush here for blending. Just one second. This one is not working. Okay, this one. Okay, let's go over lights on the face. Okay, there is a light here, you can see. And this light is kind of, imagine that there is no eyebrow. This light kind of goes like this, okay? There is a bump, all this area is a bump. This is, here's the bone. The eyebrow goes on top of this. Okay, usually because there isn't an, an, a bump, this area of the eyebrow is a little bit lighter than here which is going kind of inside the, the bone okay okay uh, let's see a light here too light here the forehead is kind of flat but there is some bumps uh, another thing that we gotta remember always there is a, a, a change on planes on the face okay look at this for example here's one plane and here it change obviously it's not that extreme like pretty flat planes and here comes the curve a curve okay here it happens the same here and here just in this area there is a change from the light to the temple from the forehead to the temple area this area here that we don't see because of the hair okay now I'm gonna establish, I'm gonna add a little bit of color. The face, there is always some reddish areas. It could be orangey, pinky, sub 21, okay? Uh, hello Nilo, hello, uh, hello Go Rap. Thank you. Uh, I got a question here, so, Sword Palette Zoom. Uh, Rob, Rob is asking me, yeah, yeah, hello, exploring history, yeah, I'm gonna try to do it. 
Michael Pospisin for the Observer is always a great greater pleasure looking at a real painting than a computer generated. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Yeah definitely. Yeah. I gotta check out that, I mean It's just like painting, or uh, because digital painting. I mean, if the tools are different, but the challenge is the same with digital painting. It's not like you know. I don't see a difference. I mean, the challenge, all the is this is the same for me. But now this AI, I think it looks like it does all the work. Or I mean. Well, okay, I gotta check out that because I'm kind of lost on, on this. Artificial intelligent, intelligence thing. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, variation on the skin. Okay, we got pink here. Okay, we know that there is pink here. I don't see that on the photograph, that's not so clear, but usually there is pink here because there is more blood. I'm gonna add a little bit of orange. And stepping back to check out, this is maybe too pinky. I think that's okay. Okay, here, the same. The nose. The forehead a little bit, the chin, just the same areas, always the same areas. Now you, you know that you've been watching my videos, with repetition, 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 practice, you know, practices, repetition, repetition. I establish first values, I'm going to start with five, six values here and starting with just two. One for lights, the other one for shadows. Okay. From there I move to color. Oops, that was too much. Too much color on my brush. Okay. To repeat this, for the people that's new, reddish colors on the face. Okay, upper and lower eyelid, nose, cheeks, chin. Okay. Always checking alignments, okay? You got the eyes in one line and the mouth in another line. You gotta check out. In this case, I see the eyes are here and the mouth is kind of tilted a little bit, okay? No, sometimes when I see that something is tilted like that, but maybe it's too much that and my painting starts lo looking like a, a mistake, I change that, okay? I mean that I aligned, I tried to make both lines parallel. Okay. Well, let's see what this row one eye. Well, another thing, the, the nose. Remember, we see some planes on the nose. This is something that, like this. I don't know, maybe it's, it's not so clear. Okay. This represents the base. And that's always on shadow. Okay. That helps. Okay, that helps a lot. No, that does, that's a a base in that base so it's usually in shell not always you know if it, it, it like it, I say it always because 90% of the time more than 90% of the time the light is coming from up and that area is in shadow but as, as soon as I change 
and I, let's say I turn on the light that comes from below, that's going to change. See some questions. Hmm. Okay. Mila is saying, "Alright, so I wrote you to a Messenger. Please answer me when you have time." Okay. I will try. <laughs> I will do it. Hello, Irma. Hello, Susan. From Edmontonka. Wow. Wow, I gotta ask, where is that? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Edmontonka. Edmon Ed oh, sorry, Edmonton, California. Oh, what a, what a fool. <laughs> I get a little bit closer, I, I can't I, I could understand. Edmonton, Edmonton, California. <laughs> uh. Okay. Uh, let me let me see. Uh, looking for some questions. Hello, Sinet. Uh, oh, Nikki saying we we'll need to scroll up and click the like button too. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, let's continue. Okay, these lines that I place here is just to remember, okay, we're going to see lights and shadows. We need, I need this, for example, me personally, I need the, to always think about that because in this case, like in so many cases, I don't see like the light or everything is pretty subtle. Okay, now I know that, for example, that I have light in one side. Yeah. And for example, there is there is a little bit of light here, you know. I'm gonna add some yellow with white here. There is light there, okay. The other light that's gonna find out is gonna here. They're gonna find this here. Obviously, that's gonna be a different temperature. No yellow there. Why? Because the plane is changing, okay. And I know that this area could be a little bit lighter. Oh, why? Okay, I'm gonna explain this. I'm gonna pick up a bigger brush. Okay, something like this. Light. Light. Okay. Shadow. That's the basic principle. Shadow. Okay. Light shadow, light shadow. That's the planes of the face, the planes of the nose, the planes of the planes on the face. We see those planes that clearly. No, I see that on the nose. No, okay, but that definitely that helps me to know that when when I paint because if I got lost, at least I got that to get back and try to add some volume to the nose. You know, because a photograph is a photograph, and the values are there but we are not able to see to to see all the values that exist you know in nature that all, all the values that the camera is is capturing we are a limitation you know we okay okay Let's continue. She's smiling a little bit. Listen about the planes of the face. 
helps a lot when we don't have too much information on the photograph. Anatomy does the same, you know. That's what I keep saying. We paint what we see, we paint what we know, and when we don't see, what do you think we paint? What we know, you know. Hello, Yvonne. Oh, it looks like somebody has hit the dislike but button. <laughs> That's okay. Okay. Uh, I'll be working with a tiny brush number number double zero. I pick up another one not double zero. Hello Michael, Marius saying greetings from Greece, oh wow, Rob says saying Canadian invasion, <laughs> oh look, a lot of people from Canada, oh that's pretty nice, oh Diane is saying that Diane Charit, Charit, oh thank you Diane, Inga Wan is greetings from Wisconsin, US. Thank you. Hello, Shira. Shira. Yes, sorry. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna take this call. I'm gonna mute my microphone.
blend a little bit Mixing some black here with raw umber. Adding some blue to this darker color with a touch of yellow to mix a darker green. Hello Pang Shui Okay, uh, let's continue This looks too bright, I don't know why
Go paint, uh, check in, check in. Uh, gonna paint her blue eyes. from brush uh, okay I dropped a little bit of linseed oil on my brushes Just a little bit of green with orange and white. Okay. Yellow and white. I just want to knock down the skin color a little bit since she's in shadow okay let me see oh that's too greenish a touch of red I want to I want to knock down the color a little bit okay you know uh, I, I was thinking to add, make a difference between the reddish colors on the face but at the same time if I got I'm gonna paint so some green here I'm thinking that it's gonna be a good idea to have some green more visible green on the face and at the same time that greenish color is gonna uh, make the reddish colors on the face a little bit more a little bit more saturated because of contrast okay let's see let's see if that works
Mm. I'm trying to find a balance here between this greenish and pinky color. Okay. I don't see this green or pink on on the painting, it's just on the photograph, sorry. I just want to add a little bit more color there, okay? more of this one this is more like a neutral greenish color a little bit of blue when you work uh oh what well, two things I'm paying attention first you know values always values because values are pretty important uh, I cannot uh, let, let's say color just uh, interrupt me or kind of you know block my view about values it's always about thinking about about light mid-tones and shadows okay sometimes because we think on color we kind of mess all the values on the on, on, on the portrait okay uh, and we gotta go back on things that we should know like I said before light here cheekbone areas where we're gonna find light always and we don't need to compare with the photograph to, to see those lights since we know where they are we gotta look for them if we don't find them on those spots that means that something is wrong okay that means obviously we we're making a mistake in some in some some point. blend a little bit Uh, Nikki saying one day we should all tra tra travel to meet at the green the great museums of art and together pay Renzo's way as our master teacher. <laughs> okay, that sounds pretty good. my brush mixing some black and white gray down this color a little bit One color that's pretty beautiful when we try to get this kind of greenish color on the skin or oh, we try to exaggerate these greenish colors on the skin 
es Yellow Ochre en Black okay. Mix that and uh, for me, for example, I, I have seen that color after obviously mixing that color and that happens when we work with the sound palette you know, the sound palette is just about yellow ochre, camion red, black and white and inevitably we want to mix yellow ochre and black there is a green that I'm 100% sure that I have seen the greens in so many master paintings yeah. it's kind of you see something and you recognize that color See, I like it. Uh, like the color. Let's make this screen a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Now, uh, I'm gonna put more attention now to the likeness. And I'm gonna retouch some areas because I mean this is too greenish. Yeah, I gotta, I'm gonna retouch a little bit here. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah. Maybe I'm gonna just, you know, work on the height of the face. Mm. Mm. I'm gonna use this fan brush and let's add some orange here. Have a tiny brush and work on the eyes. Just one second, one second.
sorry that I'm, 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 I'm muting my microphone from time to time. You know, I'm taking some calls, some phone calls, and I cannot, you know, skip on them. Sorry. the shape of the eye Uh, Sylvie is asking me, is this cadmium yellow, lemon yellow, or chrome yellow? Oh, this is chrome yellow. I have chrome yellow here. Speaking about museums, it's been a long time since I, I go to visit a really nice museum. I love the museum that I have here, you know, it's just like walking is 10 minutes. It's the biggest museum in my country. They have a lot of paintings, yeah, beautiful paintings. Uh, a lot of them, I would say that it has the, the well, maybe, yeah, it's kind of high quality paintings, like European quality. And one of the the tops does the the first principal of the school of art here in Peru. This guy studied in in Europe, and you can see when you see his paintings, you know that the quality is pretty pretty good. His name is Daniel 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 Hernandez. He was the I don't know if he was the founder. But I know it was he was the first principal of the School of Art here. He studied in I don't know where, yeah, I don't remember. But I know that he studied in Europe. And his paintings uh you can tell you know because the uh let's say academic style, the way that he worked on the shadows, lights, volume, colors, it's just amazing. It's just amazing. I gotta investigate more because I don't know if he, 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 he I know that for sure that he was the first principal but I don't know if he thought I think he thought as a teacher 
as the principal and as a teacher. Yeah, pretty sure he did. Uh, but not so sure. I'm gonna investigate more about that. It's been like uh, an, an international museum, the last one that I visited. And that was the Metropolitan Museum, but it's been like 20 years. Uh, I stayed nine months in New York, and for sure I was, I thought, you know, I gotta go back here. Uh, I went back to New York like twice and never again. Yeah, I don't know what happened. I don't even know, but here I am. But definitely, that was kind of a wish, you know. Like, hey, I gotta, I gotta go back here. It's just too much to see. Too much art. Maybe one of this one of this these days. See, just step back, double check. I'll be back in just two minutes, okay?
Sorry, a bug. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, I think I need to add more cheek here. Mm. I'll make it darker. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna blend here a little bit. shadow here mm, not so sure but one thing I know um, I need more shadow here a little bit darker yeah because I don't see the smile Soften some edges. For example, here. See, I'm squinting down my eyes and I need to darken up here. Darken up here a little bit more.
I'll be back again in just one minute. back to move my camera I think okay. I think that's better See, I think I gotta move the I gotta move the mouth the mouth a little bit up. Okay. I think it's just the upper lip. A little bit up.
Okay, um, I think it's time to time for me to capture my screen and just reverse the image on Photoshop and see what is wrong. I mean, I, I like what I have right now. You know, kind of still uh, working on everything at the same time, drawing, values, color. Yeah. Okay. Rob saying, okay, see you. See you next week, Rob. Jonas is saying, I'd, I'd like to buy food from Peru. Okay. Hello, the John. Uh, uh, what kind of oil paint do you use? Uh, it's student, it's student quality. I use uh, this Winton. It's from Winsor and Newton. It's Winton. It is student quality. It works pretty good, you know, but it's up 21, you know, like uh, I've been using this for years. Uh, and the other brand I have I have used maybe more. It was a Peruvian uh, brand that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, Phoenix, that was the name, Phoenix. And they have the same, you know, Phoenix that was the professional grade, in Gamma, from Phoenix that was the student grade. It was pretty good. Yeah. I don't have any tube, like nothing, nothing from that that time. The store kind of closed down like up. Uh, when? I don't remember. But definitely more than 20 years ago. I don't even know if at that time uh, this... Uh, what other brands existed on the market here in Peru but it was about just everything it was about just that brand it was just like the only one that existed here in Lima that's the only one I remember and there's a, a guy, a painter who this guy uh, Somebody told me the story, you know, that one, of the, one painter, he was, he was, I think he was just traveling from Europe to Peru too much, maybe. Um, no, no, not, I mean, enough to bring some oil paints from Europe. And at the end, this guy uh, opened up a store and he's working until today. And he sells on that that store just Rembrandt, I think, I mean, three or four brands, Van Gogh, Rembrandt. I don't know. I, remember, I don't remember the other names. But he used to sell uh, the oil paints. I just you know take the oil paints to the school of art and sell sell the tubes to to friends. To his friends. And with time, you know, he started. A business. Uh, what exists here? There is another brand that's an acrylic. That's a Peruvian brand. The name is. Uh, oh my God! What's the name? I got it here. Adriano. I think it's Adriano. Somebody from Peru here. <laughs> oh my God! I, uh, I knew the name. I didn't know. I don't know what happened. I, I lost the name. Adrian, Adrian, Adrian. That's the name. That was another painter. You know that he studied that that business. It's pretty nice. You know, it's just like uh, when you see who's when, when you ask who's the owner of this brand. He's usually a painter. Uh, I'm gonna see the comments. Uh, Zelda saying, I, uh, Zelda obsessed, 
Uh, I don't. I didn't know you were Peruvian. My mom is also Peruvian. Oh, that's pretty nice. Yeah. Uh, and there was a brand, a brand of Euro paints. That was the name. I don't remember the name, but some, a little bit bad with names. This this guy, he was he just uh, made, you know, the oil paints. Looks like at his house, and he used to just go f from painter to painter and sell, you know, the oil paints in little pockets, little kind of tiny. I don't even know how to name it. I think. I don't even know the shape of these little things, but they just two, no, not even tubes. Yeah, this guy died two, uh, a few years ago, and the brand that was kind of, you know, that w this brand it was kind of on the air. It didn't exist it like uh, for real. Just painters we. We knew about this brand. Some painters they used to use the brand because they love it, the colors, the pigment. And when this guy died, it just the brand died with him. And with time, you know, when I, uh, uh, I started to, with time, I remember, maybe a few years later, that a few years after finishing the School of Art, I met a guy, another guy, and at the end I started to know that, uh, I, I knew that this a brand of Europeans, Phoenix, that was pretty big here, you know, it was like a big company, and that was kind of a small portion of this huge company, just like maybe five percent of the company just just made the oil paints, and that was because of the owner of the whole company. He he was a painter. I mean, not not not, not like a professional painter. You know, he was a businessman, but he used to paint. And basically, he created this brand. You know, and I think his company it was about about I don't know I mean, about text a textile company you know they use a lot of pigments and tint yeah. as soon as this guy died you know his family basically closed down that area of, of the business that was just you know a small portion of the of his business that he was for making oil paints Even myself, at some point, I thought about, you know, creating a, a or your paints a brand. I don't, I don't, I remember that. I don't know why. <laughs>
see. Goes back to the painting. that getting to get the age her age that's gonna be my problem today when I work on the the white of the eye I usually I add light here in this corner okay from this corner I spread the light up but I keep lighter here on that portion, that tiny portion. I keep it lighter. And this way, I uh, try to represent the roughness of the sclera. You know, the sclera is the, the eye, the eye is a ball. Every time that we paint the eye, we gotta think about that. We gotta create the illusion that below, that we, that we feel that something rounded is below the the skin is under the skin under the upper and lower eyelid that's the difficult part here but I uh, just paying attention I, and another thing for example that I, uh, I do is uh, basically I pick up a color like this you see like a dark red and I paint this area with this color here okay we can paint with black pure black if you want uh, here where where are the eyelashes? Okay, I can use and using right now pure black. Why? Because of the eyelashes, okay? Here and here. But as soon as you get closer to the tear duck, you gotta change the color. A dark red is gonna work. Now another thing here in the lower eyelid, again the intention is what? Is to create the illusion that here is something rounded beneath the skin. Here. Okay? We usually okay, what we use is obviously light and shadows to create that illusion. adding a little bit of light here it's a little bit shadow here a little bit light here and kind of molding this like this is you know covering some something spherical uh, and pay attention to smaller areas and as I start working on details I start thinking more and more about that soften edges and try to get you know this illusion that uh, that there is so many kind of sp spherical forms beneath the skin and trying to get those forms the volume of those forms okay Highlight here. I don't see it, but it's gonna be nice. No, not more light to the eyes, more vivid eyes. See, 
I think I'm getting closer to... I like the color, but no, I want to be sure just not to exaggerate those highlights on the face, you know. I think I gotta darken up the, the forehead and reduce the forehead at the same time. Yeah. And make this a little bit more rounded. Okay, soften this shadow there. Obviously, soften the the mouth, the lips, the edges. It takes a little bit to get just to soften edges, but it's something pretty important. Okay, uh, I think first. We gotta get used to the idea how important is that, okay? Because when I was a student, remember, I got that advice so many times, soften the ages, soften the ages. And for me, it was like, uh, no. I wanted to always add details, and every time that I see something kind of blurry, it was, no, I gotta add something there, I gotta add details. I don't, I don't, I didn't like it. I, I like it, details and details everywhere. It took me some, some time, some time, you know, to understand how important it's just soften edges and how beautiful it is when we're able to control that and how a lost edge could make another area of the face just pop forward, you know. For example, if I sharp the nose and soften the edges here, what creates that effect of on the camera? You know, the cameras, the, the, the background is blurry and what is closer is, is, is really focused and it's something something similar. That's the way the, the human eye, you know, see things because for us, like, uh, we are not able to see the background and see the figure at the same time. Every time that we see something, all the rest is kind of blurry. And with painting, we can recreate that, we can exaggerate that, okay? And what painters used to do is exaggerate things a little bit, some subtleties, like color, for example. Add more saturation in some areas, knock down the color, saturate, add more or less contrast, you know, play with edges. Uh, a lot of things are just on the painting process is are not on the photograph uh, maybe, let's say I mean uh, maybe I'm confusing things it's more about the let's say those tricks that we learn okay and we kind of you know push and pull those little things like softening an edge make it sharp make it soft and we keep doing that during the whole process of the painting because it's a it's a process of adjustment. We at the same time we always gotta pay attention to know to how dark and how light is an area. Yeah. And you know that's a value control. Okay. I'm gonna just concentrate a little bit. I'm gonna make this image a little bit bigger. I need to see it here to compare. Okay, I like it. And right now, I'm, I'm just uh, I'm not watching my painting. I mean, obviously, I gotta see my painting to to paint. But I'm basically painting and checking out the photograph. Okay, I see. For example, it's kind of you know. Right now, what I see on my screen is obviously my painting and the photograph is smaller than here, and that's like watching my own painting from a distance. In, in painting like uh, from one meter maybe or you know that would be like three foot something like that like from a distance and that's that's pretty nice you know to, to paint
pain to see to retouch some things from a distance. Okay. Now about the color, you will know that I have changed the color in purpose. I add this greenish color here, green, 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 you know, to see more of this pinkish color in some area of the face. I have done that on purpose, okay? Okay, uh, okay. Uh, about this color here, I love this bright yellowish light. I don't know if I'm gonna keep it. I mean, one thing is I, what I love, one thing what is what is working for my painting. I think it's working. I think that this light is working pretty good. Just too intense. Ah, you know. Mm, mm, okay. Uh, what, what if I knock it down that a little bit? And let's see. Okay. And let's see if that works. I'm mixing uh, raw umber with white. With this color I'm knocking down the, the light a little bit. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna leave it there, okay? I'm gonna spend more time there, but the face is gonna be always more important than anything. Okay, I just I like it this pinky here. I think that's gonna be a good idea to add a little bit of pink here. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. And now let's check out the mouth. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna make a close up. Okay. It's a brush number zero. That's what it's called. It's called uh, uh, linear, liner, liner. Yeah, they call it liner. I love this pinky here. Those touches. I love those ones. Another little bit of orange. Little bit, a little bit. I need to soften the edge of the mouth. Smaller brush.
That's my little dog. No, there is nobody at home right now. And maybe it's just not gonna stop barking. Yep, looks like she's not gonna stop. She used to cry when she was alone, uh, but I think she just got used to, you know, enjoying the time with the cats because we I, I, we have five cats. Yep, and pretty sure she's having a good time, you know, chasing the cats. The only funny thing that uh, is like uh, she kind of she kind of behave or try to behave I don't know as as a cat and uh, I remember one time I I found it on top of the table you know the cats used to go on top of the table but dogs they don't used to they don't they don't don't, don't do that but there was they were there my little dog you know on top of the table. Just the way that I'm uh, pretty sure she has seen the cats do, you know, they go on top of the table, they sometimes they sleep, some of them they try to sleep there. Of this question is for me. Anything do you like to listen to music? Is if so, what kind? I like to listen to classical to modern music. That's Jonas Mark saying that. Yeah, uh, yeah you know, uh, I'm more like like looking for new singers all the time, new music. And yeah, basically just that. I mean, I've been doing that a lot. Looking on Google or on YouTube, like 
no? the, the top 100 singers of 2020, for example, something like that. And from there I found one that I like, and I started, you know, listening to music for, started listening to the song that I like for a hundred times. Until my, my, my daughter or my son, they got just mad, you know, they got just like, that's too much, that, you know. I kind of, I cannot help myself to do that all the time. That's something I used to do when I was single, when I was alone on my studio, you know, play the same music again and again, again and again. So different when you're alone. You know. Yeah, but that's amazing how, how is the, you know, the taste from music, what you like, what, what you don't like. It's just like I share some music with my my kids, but not all the music, you know. Sometimes, uh, I, what can I say? I don't like the music that they, they, they listen. Yeah. I don't find any rhythm. It's like, mm, it's like my, my daughter, she's kind of dancing there with, you know, and I, 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 for me, it's like, I don't find the rhythm of the music, you know. It's just, I don't even remember the, the group. And for my son, it's the same. He's kind of, you know, listening to something that he likes. And for me, it's just like, oh my God, what's happening? Okay, uh, comparing, comparing and comparing, squinting down my eyes. Okay, are we checking out lights and highlights and where are we gonna see lights? Okay, where are we gonna find lights? Remember, cheekbone, nose, we gotta check it out there, all those lights there. If all those lights are, are there, everything is okay. We don't see them. Yeah. Because what happens when we blend, sometimes, so many times we over blend. And as, after a few minutes we smooth out all those lights. You know, and that happens so often. We gotta just put them back, paint them back again. Yeah. And yeah. It's just like movies. I love to see movies, to watch movies, but the end, I find myself, I find myself, you know, going over channel after channel, channel, looking movie after movie on 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 Netflix, Amazon Prime. I don't know what 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 else, what else I have, HBO, I think, yeah, HBO, Disney. I don't know what it is. I mean, it's like five, six channels. My my daughter, she's paying like for Amazon Prime and HBO. I don't know what it is more, what it is more. And find myself just like, I think it's pretty normal, you know. And my wife is like, you gonna stop or what? Stop or something. Watch anything, but stop it. And I said, okay, 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 I'm gonna stop. But I don't want. I don't gonna watch anything. <laughs> Okay, let's see. I think I'm closer with DH, yeah? I wanna believe that I'm closer with DH, but I think I need more rounded. I need to feel more rounded here. Yeah, I don't feel, I, I see a little bit of the smile, but not that much. I love the color I have. I love it. This kind of greenish with pinky, I love it. Okay? Uh, I think I got lucky with the color. 
Like I was trying to adjust. I, I was thinking it's, this is gonna take me a lot of time to adjust the color, but I think I got it right. Now, I know. I mean, I know myself too. We all know each other. You know, I know that maybe tomorrow I'm gonna change my mind and I'm gonna see this different. That happens often, but right now I like it. What I don't like is I don't still. I I need to see the volume and and I I wanna work here. To make it this a little bit more rounded, that means I'm adding more light. Yeah. This has to be rounded, for example, here rounded, yeah. here on this area here. There is a light that goes like from the nose. It goes like this to this area. And that makes the no the mouth pop forward, okay, a little bit, and create the illusion that the mouth is not a flat surface, okay. Try to learn those little things because the idea about painting a portrait for me, for example, is trying to know what what's happening on every area of the port of the face. Like, I'm gonna find a shadow here, I'm gonna find a shadow there, I'm gonna find a light here and there, and just by repetition, is kind of that. I think that helps me a lot. Okay, uh, but there's no guarantee, but you know, it's very just, it's very knowing that just trying to copy a photograph. More, if, you know, and at the same time, when you paint at a prima, three hours, four hours, it will be kind of difficult to get really close to a photograph in that amount of time. Okay. Okay, let's paint a little bit of the hair. I'm going to use a fan brush. And let's see, I'm going to make this image a little bit bigger again, to compare here on the screen, yeah, I need to, I need to work on, the, now that I make it bigger, I see the difference on the forehead, I see a difference. Uh, this light here is kind of cool. We can make a cool light just by adding white because white is not a warm color. Okay, let's say you have two light lighter colors yellow and white. Yellow is warm, white is, is cool. I got this orange here, uh, don't like it right now. I'm mixing raw amber and white. This is raw amber and white. Still knocking down, you know, to get this kind of grayish color. Because uh, if I mix black and white, the grayish color is going to be kind of bluish because I work with ivory black. And I prefer this raw amber. and white. Okay. Let's see some questions. I love the green and pink as well. Okay. Thank you. Hello Elizabeth. Jim Ewing saying I have stopped squinting my eyes. Now I just take off my glasses. I'm gonna try that. Okay, I think it works. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nikki saying, see you on Patreon, Patricia. Oh, thank you, Nikki. Yeah. For oh, I got a Patreon account and I got painting. 
Pin a lot less on some patron, okay, for the people that want to just you know paint. <laughs> okay, the, the the point is something similar, but obviously we paint together. We see each other paintings, and that's the thing, you know. Okay, I I'm just thinking what to do with the hair. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of red here and white. Got this kind of pinky color, and let's see. I'm going pretty lightly. I want this pink get mixed here with this color. Okay, that was too much. orange here and brown I'm gonna mix this black and orange more orange black oof that was that was too much black I'm gonna add more yellow, more orange to my palette. Evelyn is asking, thank you, Philips. What's the time frame on Patreon? Should you sign up on the first of the month? Oh, yeah, that's better. Yeah. Yeah. On Patreon, you're gonna see that there is that there are tiers. We started at four dollars, and we paint for four dollars. We paint Saturdays, and we have a critique session Fridays night, Saturdays morning, and Friday Fridays night. And then it goes to uh, you got there the link nine dollars, fifteen dollars, and a hundred dollars. Uh. Yeah, okay, let's see. Nilu, this is thank you. Why blending? If the brush gets too sticky, how to tackle? Okay, I, I just clean the brush. When I blend, I keep cleaning my brush. Like I blend, I clean. I blend, I don't blend more than maybe five seconds. Yeah, ten, ten seconds. Like it's just, you know, like this, and I clean. I blend, I clean. I keep doing that. It's a good idea to start the first, isn't it, Renzo? Yeah, 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 of course. It's better, it's better, it's better, yeah. And if somebody joins any time, obviously, everybody's going to be able to join, to see a lot, of, to watch a lot of recorded lessons. Yeah, but if somebody just want, want, want to paint alone, you know, uh, that's better, you know, everybody's going to take a more advantage during the first day of the month I'm using a fan brush, this is a synthetic brush I don't press that much, pretty lightly clean the brush pick up more paint and I repeat ok, um, you, should, I, you see I turn the brush on just one side 
on the other side. I clean the brush. If you just uh, don't clean the brush and go back to here to the mixture, you're gonna darken up this one pretty fast. Uh, that's kind of tricky because it's kind of the I keep forgetting sometimes to clean the brush and I'm working here and then I go back like like for example working here and I go back and this happens you know it's better we, if we try to clean to keep clean this brush or to use paper towel all the time and clean it the same for the blending brush What if I exaggerate the green? I love. I have a green here that I love. This chrome green. It's pretty intense. Look at that. I love it. Black. This is a mistake, okay? I was watching my screen and when I turned the face, I said, wow, this is too dark. I picked up by mistake a little black. I think it's working. Yeah, at the end it's working. I'm not gonna add green again. I don't know, uh, I don't like these pinks here, but I think uh, having some color variations always helps to, you know, to add more color to the paint. This is another thing that it takes a little bit of time to learn, I remember I remember so many things that when I was a student, like it's, it's like oh, one teacher he used to mention all the time. Every time that you paint the background, you gotta pick up the color of the background and put it, you know. And when this this teacher he used to do it, you know, pick up your brush and do it. And every time that he he used to do that for me it was like, oh my god, I don't like it. It's kind of you know, you ruined my painting. If I, I didn't say anything. But uh, I felt that, hey, I don't like those var varieties, those variations. And another thing that it takes a little bit of time to, to learn. Yeah, I think this green add more... I don't know. And what about gray? Yeah, but maybe it's not it's not like a a, su a sunny day. It's more like a no sunny day day that that sunlight but from the sky. You know, it's kind of a cloudy day and with some light and kind of sad. Who knows? Who loves the green and who hates the green? <laughs> hmm? Who hates the green? Green is not a color that everybody loves. I, I want to find out more people do not just not like dislike green but they don't like it I mean uh, obviously if you paint landscapes everything is about green but a painting especially in the painting it's just like mm, it's not a color that we we see so commonly on paintings okay I'm gonna continue working on this here okay, I'm going to knock down this yellow here 
I'm gonna mix raw umber and white. Now I repeat, I mix raw umber and white to have a neutral gray. And when I, I want a bluish gray, I mix black and white. I'll be black and white. white, a little bit of raw umber. And just one side of the brush, uh, the, the corner of the brush, let's say the corner of the brush. Bien. I have another thin brush. I'm gonna use it for darker hairs. Now here, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna just clean the brush with linseed oil. Yeah, some people are telling that love the green and this painting. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm gonna use a, a brush that I use for blending. My brushes that I use for blending are just like like this. You know, I wanna use this with some linseed oil, this darker darker color, and I wanna 
paint the hair. Okay, I start here where it's darker and I move the brush like this. I load more paint. Pretty lightly, okay, pretty lightly. up white all the brush with white I just one one side of the brush one corner of the brush I see some pretty light hair just you not know, flying around. Okay, I need to work on the forehead. Okay, I think the forehead is kind of flat. I need more light here. More light here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to make some. Palisar and greens and then blue. Okay. I want to squeeze on this of this violet here. It's not like I make. I want to make this color so visible. It's kind of trying to hide something here. Some color here in the shadows. of this orange here orange and red just some touches
cobalt blue and a glycerin crimson. Okay. Touch of white to show the color. pure orange uh, what I'm trying to do is just create contrast you know this is a cool color and I'm thinking to add orange here which is a warm color yeah? and when you have two colors that has different temperature together it usually that enhances color in that area that smaller area which does contrast yeah? just contrast I need to work more on this eye, you know. Yeah, something's not good there. Uh, it's been two hours and a half. I still have uh, half hour. Mm. Okay, Jean Ewing suggesting a title. We should call it Gern with attitude. Okay, thank you. Hello, Maggie. Yeah. Michael Pospi is saying every week you are like landing a big airplane while chatting with the passengers. Passengers, amazing skills. Thank you. Okay. Uh, what it was? Okay. Uh, okay, I was thinking about something, I forget. Oh, this eye. There. Yeah, I gotta work on that eye. The first, the weight of the eye. A little bit of this gray. Let's see. Another thing that I gotta do is go to buy this cloth that I use for the canvas. Uh, I didn't have this one is pretty thin. I don't know if you can notice there is no if I'm gonna zoom in. I like it, you know, but it's not it doesn't have any tooth like no tooth. It's pretty pretty I mean I like a little bit of tooth on the canvas, a little bit. And I like this canvas, but that's not the one that I use like all the time. Yeah, I gotta say at the same time, you know, that it's kind of I, I change from time to time. It's like nowadays I'm using a thicker canvas, and maybe in the next year I'm gonna just switch to another one. They're gonna start using another a different one for maybe. A year or two years and then I find a little pretty sure I'm gonna find a, a, something new and I'm gonna start using it the same with brushes it's just like it just brushes and then uh, I change I found new brushes and I start using them uh, and then I switch to a different ones but I gotta say that speaking about brushes all of them looks like pretty similar Pretty, pretty similar. Oh, by the way, there is some links to Amazon where you can buy 
brushes that are pretty close to, to the ones that I use. See? See? My daughter knocked the door and she asked, are you alive? And then she's going upstairs saying, hey, he's alive. He's still alive. <laughs> what happens is uh, a, little, a, a little bit sick, a little bit. <laughs> and she's like, I mean, this, she's joking, you know, she's joking around like, like that. She was checking on me, like... Pretty funny. Pick up some pure black and let's paint the pupil. I think I'm gonna move this eye. There, I think that's good. A little bit of white. Mm. Oh, Nikki's asking me, what do you like tooth? I thought we get sold to get rid of tooth. Oh, yeah, I love a little bit, okay? It's not that much, you know, the painting is for, for my friends here in Lima, some of my friends that you, they just, just to paint on kind of, they prepare this, this, their own, their own canvases. You know, my canvas is pretty smooth. But this one, like today, is even smoother. It's just too much. Okay, uh, but if... Uh, you check out the paintings you got. You know, my paintings you bought me. That's the tooth that I, I like. 
you can you can see a little bit of that. This one is even smoother. I mean, that's yeah, I like it, but I don't know. I mean, it's just like uh, I don't know. I, I, you know, uh, like I said, it's it's just something that I like when one one month and the next month I just change it, something like that. It's just like uh, maybe just to try something different and I get used to, to something different one time and then I change and then now I like the other cloth that I use for to prepare my canvases I don't have any more I gotta go I gotta go, go buy some you know some some and I got this one in fact, I got a, a, a little bit here. What is it? Okay, here it is. I, I, I have this for at least 10 canvases or maybe more. I don't know if you all can see this. There's no tooth. Okay? And here's the one that I, I, I use. I usually use. It's thicker. And I don't know if you can see a little bit of tooth. This is the one that I like now, you know, these days. But it's not like it's better. No, 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 no. It's not. It's not about that. It's not like this one is better than the other. No. <laughs> yeah, maybe Nikki. Yeah. <laughs> okay, does it have something to do with the way the brush catches on, on the canvas? The tension? No. Uh, no. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I cannot say, you know, but because uh, I used to work on this cloth like for years. Mm. I love it. I love it like at some point it looks just like paper, no texture at all, nothing. Yeah. And then I change and I, I start to like a little bit of texture, a little bit. Yeah. And that's why I say it's not like something is better. No, I feel a difference. Like, like no, 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 no. It's just like. Uh, something let's say if maybe visual i love to see that little grain sometimes yeah. and so sorry that it's just i don't have like a explanation like a reason a real reason why i choose one not no other it's just like 
no. Just one decision that I take that I don't even know why, like... Yeah. It's just the way that sometimes we like something and... Maybe we're not able to explain why we like something. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's just like when we were speaking, of, we were speaking about music. I just, just, I used to listen the song that I like like a hundred times, and all of a sudden I change. You know, something like that. Okay, I think the eyes are okay. A little bit of the eyelashes, a little bit. I see a little bit of eyelashes here. Mm. More color on the mouth, the lips. I'm darkening up here the, the corner of the mouth. I want to darken up this a little bit, not as dark as the photograph. If you see the nostril on my painting, it's not as dark as the photograph. Here you see. And the corner of the mouth is not as dark as the photograph. Okay, when you don't darken up those areas, uh, obviously you're not copying the contrast and less contrast it creates the illusion of some transparency, okay? And it's not just about that, no. But less contrast, obviously, imagine uh, um, anything that you just soften, all the darks, what happens? You know, the image is going to look more trans a little bit more transparent, okay? In that, in terms of speaking about painting, that creates softness on the painting, on the skin. Because there is nothing harsh, not nothing too too visible, you know, too too harsh. In one minute, please. See. And uh, that's the, one of the things that's kind of tricky to control because uh, it's, it's between what you see and what you want to do, you know. And I see contrast here, and obviously, it's just like my brain is trying to copy that, and it's me trying to control that, you know, trying to always check out the whole painting and, and see if I, I like if there is some softness, and at the same time, the edges. The edges complete that effect, you know, soft edges, soft contrast, but in all, in all the areas I got black, like here, pure black, and I can add even more thicker black, pure, pure black, there, okay? Now the contrast that is not on the face is in, in other areas, okay? But that's not going to affect, for example, the softness on the face and and, and that's something that I try in every painting I mean maybe not not every painting but when I see the opportunity to get some softness I try to you know always and I remember some paintings that 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 was kind of difficult to get that that uh, kind of lost something when I lost contrast okay 
In one of the paintings, I remember today that I had some problems with that. It was, I painted this guy, this actor, Joaquin, Joaquin Phoenix. And I having some problems with contrast. And he, on the photograph, he has really dark eyebrows. You know, I was softening everything. I was trying to get some point, to get some softness, some volume. But it didn't work. It didn't work out. It didn't work. I mean, I, I thought, what? You know, I don't see the character, and I had to add, you know, dark on the eyes, dark on the eyebrows, dark on the nose, add more contrast to everything. And I sacrificed the softness that I'm trying to get, I was trying to get, to get the character, you know, because uh, I didn't feel like it was working. The, and at the same time, at the same time, I gotta say that, you know, that nothing is absolute in painting. You know, so, so many times it's just what you think at the moment that it's, it's not working. And the next day, maybe you paint the same image, you repeat the same, you think, oh, it's working, and you don't change anything. Uh, uh, a lot of things happen like that in painting. It's, it's just like we think at the moment, maybe it's just the way we, you know, uh, the mood. Maybe we're happy, we're sad, I don't know. So many things, you know, are working when we paint. Okay, I think I'm getting to the end. I would love to add more details, but I think I got nice things, some touches of orange, some violet here. The green, eh, I like it, the green. Uh, mm, what else? I was trying to create some breaking some of these brush strokes by adding this, you know hair that was flying there. Yeah. What about the face? What do you think about the face? You know, that's a portrait. <laughs> Gotta be important. You think I got the smile? I don't see the smile yet. I mean, I was... Maybe a little bit more shadow here, yeah? It's like I see it and then all of a sudden I don't see it. I see it and I don't see it. Yeah, there. I like it. I love the nose, this pinky and the nose. I love it. Yeah. What about the eyes? I got, do, do you think you gotta move one eye? Do you think that she has kind, kind of funny eyes? Cross eyes? Maybe? Let me know, please, because at some point, you know, I'm just tired and moving the pupil, maybe the pupil should be more to the left. The pupil should be around it, but the space is too small and, you no, know, I don't have support here. Okay, I think that's better. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's better. Okay, I think that's it for today. Uh, just a couple of minutes just to check out everything again.
Okay, I think that's it for today. Thank you so much, everybody. Whew. Yeah. Oh, 72 people watching, just 16 likes. Oh, okay, let me check out. Oh, I see 138 likes here. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, everybody, Nikki saying, I think only a master artist can use pure black correctly. Oh, thank you. You make it work for nice depth, but blend it so it looks great. And not too much. That is tricky to do and not be too loud. Okay. Oh, thank you so much, everybody, for being here. Oh, Bold Igor, I got a super chat, $5. Thank you so much. Yeah, you know, mo money is always welcome. <laughs> I'm Nikki, say, I see 42 likes here. Yeah, it looks like I got a kind of refresh, you know. Okay, bye everybody, bye Monique, Nikki, Janos, Nilu, and everybody here. Okay, take care you all. And, oh, okay, I, 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 uh, Valerie uh, Prahamian, I think it's really beautiful, Renzo, you're a wizard with the paintbrush. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> Okay, I'm just scrolling up to see uh, maybe I have lost a question. Uh, oh, exploring history, I got a question here. Right, did, did any of your students learn this skill from you in Peru? Oh, I used to have, you know, uh, no, no, I was one of my, my friend, uh, one of my friends, she used to have, uh, she used to use her house as uh, some kind of, Art Academy. It, it, she has a huge house, you know, and there was like eight, eight, yeah, kind of eight classrooms. Obviously, the rooms of the house. I used to teach portrait painting there. It was for kind, uh, kind of a couple of months. Yeah, she asked me to go back to teach again. I don't know. Wow, it takes me like a lot to go out. Yeah. No, uh, and it's like a uh, forty minutes from here. Mm, mm. Okay. Uh, maybe I, I need. Maybe I, I will go. I don't know. You know, it's, it's okay. Go out. You know, I'm spending too much time here. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. Again, and see you next time for my patrons. See you in a couple of hours. In an hour. Oh my god, no, couple of hours, yeah, yeah, couple of hours, we have a drawing session today, tonight, see you tomorrow for the critique, see you Saturday, we're gonna paint a profile, and see you Sunday for a portrait painting, and speaking about, to my patrons, thank you so much, bye, bye Elizabeth, bye Valerie, Janas. Oh, you see, oh, yeah, all oh, the lights are going up. Oh, that's pretty nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, you can, nobody can, can go without smashing the like button, okay? I'm gonna wait here until the last one. <laughs> okay, thank you, Re Rebecca. Bye, everybody. See you next time. Oh, it's still going up, 150.
53 likes. Oh, oh, wow, it looks like people is just, you know, is listening. People is listening, yeah. You know, the count of people watching the video is going, is going down, and the count of the likes is going up. It's just like, you know, people is going out and saying, okay, like, I like and then go. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's pretty good. Yeah. If you don't like it, press dislike twice. Okay, okay, I gotta go. I'm hungry, I gotta go to eat. <laughs> Bye.